Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This launch isn't shooting for the moon or a distant planet. No rocket boosters are needed. And the passengers inside? Insects. We develop, in collaboration with USDA, a uh, drone-based system for releasing sterile insects. On a September day in western Michigan, the insects traveling during this routine drone launch by M3 Agriculture Technologies are codling moths. 6,400 moths. The bane of existence for many pear and apple orchard owners. Codling moth is really the worm in the apple. It, you know, it's the primary pest. It's, the, it's always been a, a nuisance for growers for the last 200 years in North America. It's the predominant pest worldwide. I think the only place where codling moth is not an issue or has not established is in Japan and some parts of Asia. Codling moths have long been a foe at Hayden Farms of Pasco, Washington. But when the apple and cherry producers switched a half dozen years ago to organic apple practices, meaning synthetic pesticides were no longer an option, they struggled to keep control. The major pest in apples by far is codling moth. And so when we first converted, we were clean coming from conventional to organic. We didn't have any codling moth problems. Then we had a neighbor that was organic and kind of got in trouble with the farm and his control went to heck. A lot of problems, and those problems drifted over to us. We tried every means possible to control coddling moths. Hayden says they ultimately needed an answer beyond just natural oils and an insect virus spray. Those worked, but oils can only be applied a few times before harming the trees, and the viral spray needed to be reapplied repeatedly, driving their pesticide spending up. The viral spray also had to be consumed by the insects, meaning they would leave tiny bite holes in the fruit, known as stings. Inspired by Washington State University's research into sterilized insects as biocontrols in orchards, Hayden decided to give it a try, hiring M3. We were really shocked the first year we saw real good results. We still had some stings that first year with it. Since then, we have really been very clean this year. I mean, I might have seen a couple stings all season in 125 acres. Although drone delivery of insects is relatively new, sterile insect technique, or SIT, is not. SIT is a type of biological control, an alternative or supplement to chemicals when managing agricultural pests like codling moth. The insects that we release are sterilized. They're sterilized with ionizing radiation. Uh, and it, it damages their DNA to the point to where they're still viable uh, as far as they're able to fly and they're able to act as insects. But when they mate with another insect, with a native insect that's out in the, the target environment, uh, they will lay an infertile egg. USDA has been using sterile insect strategies for decades, most notably when airplanes dropped sterilized pink bollworms, an insect that once devastated cotton crops all over the South. In 2018, USDA announced it had successfully eradicated pink bollworm. The pink bollworm is officially eradicated. Present in the U.S. ecosystem for more than a century. Sterile insect technology is not a standalone technology in most cases. In the pink bollworm, we, we had a variety of technologies that we used. We hit pink bollworm with everything we had. You have to have a thorough knowledge of the insect's biology, its field behavior, and how it interacts with the host and all of its natural enemies. After being awarded a grant, M3 began working with USDA in 2014 on developing a rapid response system in case of any small breakouts of pink bollworm. Four years later, the Dayton, Ohio-based company got to work figuring out how to safely ship and store sterilized Mexican fruit flies, lady beetles, codling moths, and other insects from insect-rearing facilities before attempting to drop sometimes reluctant bugs from drones into treetops. 
the company designed its own drones and release devices. When we went up to Washington and started releasing sterile coddling moth, then we retreated 50 acres. In 2019, we treated 1,200 acres, and that was our first year of commercial sales. Now we are at 4,000 acres in, in 2022 and growing quite nicely. The company, now with 10 employees, has moved away from its previous dependence on government grants. Besides contracts in Washington, M3 now has customers in California, Idaho, and Michigan. Part of the reason for the growing enthusiasm among producers is that insects, just like weeds, develop resistance to pesticides. For the majority of crop, especially apples and pears, there's no new chemical formulations coming online. There's, there's no more being developed. Uh, it, it takes generally 10 years of a, a long pipeline, millions of dollars to develop you know, different chemical formulations. We think that methods such as uh, biocontrol using, using insects and such, those are going to become uh, more and more popular. I think there are a lot of options with SIT, and it, it, I think it depends a lot on the pest you're talking about and the crop and just the, the setting for exactly where and what you have to work with. Altitude is 30. Various studies estimate the value of natural biological control of native pests in U.S. crops at between $1.7 billion and $5.5 billion. A Canadian facility is the only large-scale insectary rearing sterilized codling moths. Crumpets expects demand to grow for other insects, especially predatory mites that feed on two-spotted spider mites, which are harmful to crops like hops and strawberries. Also, green lacewing, which eat other harmful aphids, show promise for many specialty crops, including fruits, nuts, and marijuana. The big issue that we face is the supply of insects long-term. For Mark to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.